<coughs> Welcome back to another one of my uh, focus video on John Byrne. This is part um, zero. <laughs> it's not part three. Uh, it's out of order because I found something in one of my boxes over the weekend that I thought was really neat. And I think uh, you guys would, uh, you Byrne fans out there would love it. Uh, you know, years ago, uh, I bought a collection, and in that collection was a box of fanzine like this. And one of these days, I will do a, a video on this fanzine. It's pretty fantastic if you like Bill Sinkovich. But, you know, I didn't really pay much attention to it. It's one of those things where I bought a bunch of books, and I pay attention to the books that I bought. And then the box of fanzine and magazine, I kind of left in the corner by itself. And it was in storage for decades, probably 20 years. And eventually, you know, when I consolidated all of my books, I have it. I have probably sit on this box now for the past five years. Uh, I say eight years since I consolidated all my books from all the storage. I say about eight years ago, the box that contained these fanzine were in my possession again. But only until last week that I opened it. You know, as I go through the cleansing process, it's ongoing. As most collectors should do, is you should weed out the stuff you don't want to make room for new stuff because there is only so much room, right? Okay, so this is what got me excited. Okay, when I run across this fanzine, I was like, "Whoa, what the heck is this? I had never seen this before." It's entire the entire book almost. It is dedicated to a long interview with John Byrne. Um, what got me excited, you know, is uh, it had this part right here. 34 page of previously unpublished pencil art by John, by Byrne, fe featuring the Fantastic Four. So that little blurb right there on the cover got me all excited. So right away, I sat down over the weekend and read it. And it is extremely interesting. This fanzine came out in 1985. Okay? It was on the rack in 1985. <clears throat> so it has a chock full of great interviews. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, if people like to read this stuff, I will figure out a way to somehow scan it and put it in like a blog or something. You know, I, I'm not, like I said, I don't know what I can do. But I, I think for the Burns fans out there, you will love this. But it has a ton of great interviews uh, on everything from the start to that point in 1985 when he was doing the Fantastic Four. A lot of great drawings inside, a lot of great sketches. You know, at one point in this book, he even talked about how in back, by, eight, by, the, by the mid 80s, he was so comfortable with his penciling that he actually drew some of the book using the ink pen directly. He skipped the pencil altogether. Uh, I'm not, I'm pretty sure I know which issue those were. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, he, like I said, John Byrne, you know, he have his own little ego. What, you know, if you talk to John and talk to his fan today, most of the diehard fan would say that John and, you know, John believed that he's better today than ever. So. You know, that's, that's his opinion. I, dis I disagree. But, so it has a lot of good stuff. And, you know, I can go on and talk about all the neat stuff in this thing. It talk about uh, a lot of the anchors also. And, uh, you know, he, he talked about, you know, Terry Austin a little bit. Nothing glowing. Uh, he talked about Joe. He talked about a lot of anchors that he worked with. And I don't, from the what I read, it doesn't sound like he's... Um, Think that they add much to what he can do, um, you know, which is not a surprise, right? Because John Brown has pretty much uh, done his own thing, his own way for a long time. Only lately did he uh, allow other people to uh, finish his layout. I think I could be wrong there, but okay, let's skip. Look at that! I love that. Great, and I think he did mention that around this time is where he was peaking in. The Fantastic Four, uh, no doubt. I think the story-wise, um, for these few issues with the Galactus saga was awesome, simply awesome. One of the best 
even the inhuman stuff uh, before that, and there's a lot of good stuff. Okay, so here you get a beautiful sketch. And then Frankie Ray, okay? What's neat about this page and this character that he introduced in the Fantastic Four is what I will show you next, okay? You kind of, he talk a lot about Frankie Ray uh, and the similarity with Wolverine as far as her personality. Here we go. Collector item bonus. I'm not sure if I have seen this reproduced anywhere else, okay? I have to say that this was the first time that I stumbled across this fanzine and these pages. So, as you can see right here, it was done in 1974, so well before he got hired by Marvel. So who knows what the... I wish they go into the more backstory of his involvement on trying to get a job with Marvel. They, did, they really didn't elaborate on that point but they include these 30 pages. So as you can see here, look like, you know, he's trying to submit the work to Marvel and draw it like Rick Buckler and uh, in the Kirby style. So right off the bat, there are definitely Kirby influences there, okay? Take a look at this. You guys will have a lot of fun to go through this book. So if he submitted these pages to Marvel in 1974, I am quite surprised that he did not get a job right away because it is pretty cool. It's Kirby-ish, but you can see that is John Byrne all the way, okay? It's the same way John Byrne would draw the thing in the mid-80s. But look at that angle. Beautiful. There are some shots that are more Kirby-ish, okay? Um, but I think the first few pages right here. We have this face right here. So they have a female character trapped in some kind of globe that the thing retrieve. Okay, that's very Kirby-ish right there. That's very Kirby-ish, okay? Same here. I think the more as the page evolves, you see a lot more of uh, his copycatting uh, Kirby. So right there, that's very Kirby, right here. So they retrieve this female from the globe. And then they run some kind of test on her. Okay, it's too bad there's no dialogue because, you know, he just draw these panels and, you know, if you don't really need to know the dialogue to kind of understand what the heck is going on, okay? So it's pretty good so far, right? That's very Kirby-ish right there. Same thing right here. He does a very good impersonation of uh, Reed Richard with Kirby. Ace Kirby. Perhaps the two pages that probably resemble Kirby the most would be this one here. That is very Kirby-like. Okay, so this female uh, alien that they rescue flame up. Look at that. Could this be the, the true origin of Frankie Ray? <laughs> We never know, right? But look at that. The details, look at that. That's very Kirby right here. It's so sharp, so clean, you know. And Kirby's style is very sharp and clean too, but beautiful. I love that. That's extremely Kirby-ish. <clears throat> and then we have a full page right here, which is pretty awesome. So you can see. It is surprising that in 1974, when he submitted uh, this entry, that it took Marvel a few more years in, before they actually give him a job. You know, it's very surprising. You know, maybe they, they didn't want a copycat of Kirby, which is not true because you know you gotta understand in the mid 70s, Marvel was all about drawing the Marvel way. So I don't buy any argument that you know the reason why they didn't hire him off the bat was because he looked a lot like Kirby. Like they love people to be able to draw like Kirby or John Romita or John Buscema. They practically had those guys redrawn many things. So it's, it's very surprising to me that these pages sat at Marvel and he did not get the job.
like I said, I can go through this book and you know waste a lot of time. But as you can see, it involves the inhuman. And no doubt, I think the later page of the book, you can start to see the weaker uh, art. You know, maybe uh, it's with many artists, you know, but kind of run out of uh, steam. Like the, the fingers here is just terrible. Okay, that, 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 that's not good. But I get this, this is beautiful. Look at that full page. Like I said, his layout was very well done. I love that. That's so curvy ish. <clears throat> Last but not least, before I change, this is one of my favorite pages of this story. It's just right here. This is a beautiful rendition that's very Kirby ish to me. You know, Kirby doesn't draw women very well, in my opinion, but the occasion that he does draw beautiful classic women, they look a lot like this. Okay, so for any hardcore Kirby fan, you'll probably recognize this kind of image with Kirby drawing. So this page is absolutely beautiful. Except for you know this panel here, I'm not a big fan of that. But overall, good stuff. Okay, really, really good stuff. And uh, you know, if I wonder if people want to see this, or you know, I probably will scan all of this one day and load them up so all the Burns fan can truly enjoy it. Anyhow, uh, that's why I videotape this as Burn points zero. Okay, not. One not number three, as in the sequential series of my uh, focus on John Byrne, because this stuff in here focus more on prior period before he did the uh, the work with Charlton. So, okay. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Bye.